So in this lesson, I have some cool stuff to share about how you can turn impermanent loss into something called impermanent gain, or in just other words, use impermanent loss to your advantage as opposed to it being a burden on your portfolio. You see, most people hear the term impermanent loss and they completely run away. They say, oh, I'm not gonna invest in liquidity pools, I'll make more money hodling. And that right there is a limiting belief. Because why else would literally billions of dollars of capital be in liquidity pools? I mean, if we look at Uniswap right now, there's $5.9 billion, right? So clearly there is some way to make this thing work at the end of the day. If we look at decentralized exchanges as a whole, they have $25.8 billion of of liquidity in them right now, right? So again, there has to be some way to make this work, and there is, right? So we're gonna be discussing how you can use that impermanent loss to your advantage. Now, first things first, I just wanna mention that I generated this with AI, and not just any ordinary AI, we generated it with our in-house AI called Portfolio Vision AI, which is fed all of the knowledge from all of our courses, all of our client calls, all of our YouTube videos, all of our group coaching calls, right? Every single piece of information derived that spit out over here is derived from our knowledge base of thousands of hours of content. And this right here is using AI to your advantage. And I just wanted to show you this because this is something that all of our clients are going to be getting access to relatively soon, where they can basically chat with me. And I just wanted to show you this because this is something that our clients are going to be getting access to relatively soon. It's still in beta. We're still refining the responses and stuff like that. However, clients already get access to me, but now they can get instant responses from me, basically, utilizing our AI that's basically trained on my entire brain when it comes down to DeFi, because by now, after being in the industry for five years, after posting my journey for five years, all my thoughts have been bundled online and have been shared online. Nothing has been held back or not shared, basically. So all of that is available to feed to our AI knowledge through Fathom video call recordings, through just transcripts of our course lessons and stuff like that, and even just screenshots, images, and videos. But let's dive in, right? We have one goal here, and that is to turn impermanent loss cost into a tool. Using LP ranges for automated dollar cost average execution, maybe combining lending and borrowing to treat impermanent loss as financed accumulation or exit strategies, and even applying contingency rules for out of range events. So the first thing that we need to do though, is choose our objective, right? Do we want to accumulate more of an asset by buying the dips? Do you wanna exit gradually, or in other words, dollar cost average out of an asset and sell into strength? Do you wanna earn fees while keeping upside exposure? Or do you wanna use financing like borrows to avoid taxable sales? So the first tactic that I wanna show you, and I'm gonna pull up metrics finance in a second to actually demonstrate this live, is using liquidity pool ranges as an automatic dollar cost average strategy. Basically, you're taking a directional stance here, right? You pick the asset that you want net exposure to, like ETH, and then you would pair it with something like USD you would deploy it into a chosen range, which obviously you want to map out beforehand. And as the price rises, you are essentially converting that Ethereum into USDC, your dollar cost averaging out. As the price falls, you're buying more of that asset, and then you can just hold that asset until it hits a specific price and sell it, right? And then whenever the target is hit, you just simply close out that position. Simple as that. So let's dive into metrics finance and actually demonstrate this. So I'm going to be using this on Ethereum to USDC just as an example. We'll choose this 0.05% fee tier right over here that has $90 million of TBL. I'm gonna hit simulate, and then I'm gonna dive into actually choosing my range. Now guys, fees here aren't as important. Yes, we're gonna earn fees into the paying them, that's great, but I wouldn't say fees here are the main thing that we wanna pay attention to. We wanna pay attention to the actual goal, which is selling as the market moves up. So if we essentially set our price range at something like 4250, what I'm looking for here is to get my min price as close as possible to the current price. The reason why is because that's gonna allocate me more towards Ethereum. You can see I have about 81% Ethereum right here. And then I can put my max price at something like 5,500, right? Again, if I want to have more Ethereum, I drag that max price up, it gives me more Ethereum, or I could bring that min price up and it gives me more Ethereum. Let's just say 4,250 to 5,500, we have 100,000 bucks to sell, right? So this is one of the exit strategies that we'll be using when we're ready to actually exit the market, basically. But again, majority of that's in Ethereum. Uh, let's just say we refine our calculation range so that way we can get an accurate depiction of our fees i'm just going to be using kind of these periods we're doing about a 28 percent apr nothing too crazy 80 bucks a day on 100 grand not amazing but also pretty good compared to traditional markets but again the goal here is not the fees not the earnings but to sell your assets so we simulate that performance let's just say when ethereum goes up to a price of 
5,500, we would have exited all of our Ethereum. We would have 108,712 US dollars basically in USDC. Now, when we do the math, as to what our Ethereum was actually sold at, we essentially now have 108,712, and then we started with 20,000 roughly. So that means that we accumulated 88,538 USD basically. Well, we run that same exact process with Ethereum. How much Ethereum did we start with? 17.85. So let's go ahead and put that under the starting. How much Ethereum do we have now? Well, we have zero. So again, when we look at that, we essentially sold 17.85 Ethereum for USD. And when we simply divide that swap USD by the amount of Ethereum we started with, we essentially have a price point of 49.58, which means on average, we sold our Ethereum for 49.58. We dollar cost averaged over time. And this pool started at a price of about 4,500 bucks. So it kind of hits it right in the middle or so, right at around that $5,000 mark. Again, this is just one of the many ways that you can use impermanent loss to your advantage. Most people would look at this and be like, oh my gosh, I have 8% in impermanent loss. But if your goal is to sell those assets over time, then no, you don't, right? You actually executed perfectly on a dollar cost average out strategy. But again, your goal has to align with the actual strategy. A lot of people dive into these crypto stable pools and say, oh, it's safe, right? It's Ethereum and it's USDC. Then they you know, get all upset whenever they end up with all of their money in USDC. It's because they didn't understand the mechanics of this. Well, if it takes, let's just say, 30 days for Ethereum to go up to a price point of 5,500 bucks, let's just say, we generate an additional 2350 in LP yield, which is earning fees instead of paying them, which when we bake that into how much we now have, and let's just say USD, we actually sold for on average a price of $5,100. What if it took us 60 days to get up there, right? We now have $113,000, which average sold us for a price of 5220. So again, factoring those fees are going to help us essentially hire our proceeds automatically. And we don't have to take a dip on our proceeds when it comes to selling on a centralized or even decentralized exchange due to the fees that they charge. Next one, it's going to be using lending and borrowing with liquidity pools. This is essentially financed impermanent losses, what we'd call it. So you would supply an asset on a lending and borrowing market like Ethereum as collateral. You would borrow stable coins, right? Conservatively, of course, we would say less than 50% loan to value, uh, but you'd probably want to aim for 25 to 50% depending on your market stance. And then you'd use that borrow uh, to LP basically. So you take all that USDC and you would essentially put it into something like Ethereum to USDC or even just put it into any crypto to crypto pair as long as you're still bullish on those assets. This gives you leverage, yes, but it also allows you to essentially not worry about impermanent loss in some instances. And I'll show you the risk of this in just a second. But the result here would be you earn the LP fees, collateral retains all of its upside exposure, and permanent loss acts as a financing cost, not a forced sale. So if we take, let's just say some money and we throw it over on Aave, which I currently have about 100 grand or so over on Aave, uh, and I'll just connect my wallet over here so I can actually show you uh, what I'm doing because I've ran this strategy before, I'm not currently running it now. You can see I have about $107,000 of supplied assets. I'm borrowing $28,000 of USDC, which essentially is a 26% loan to value, something very, very safe basically. But in essence, let's say we put 100 grand of Ethereum up over on Aave. We put 100 grand of Ethereum up, and then again, we go and we borrow $40,000 of USDC. That right there would put us at a 40% loan to value. Well, now what do we do with that 40 grand? What we can do is we can take that 40 grand and we can bring it over into a liquidity pool. I'm gonna use Ethereum to USDC, for example, because these are the ones that have the most impermanent loss when you actually look at it technically, right? So say we were to deploy 40 grand right into this liquidity pool. Again, we're doing something like 28% APR. So ideally, we might wanna target something that's doing a little bit higher. But when we look at the cost to actually borrow USDC, it's 6%. Yes, we're gonna earn some on our collateral Ethereum. We're not gonna factor it in just for the sake of this to keep it simple. So if our borrow APY is negative 6% and our LP APY is let's just say 30% even, we're essentially netting out 24% per year right there. And when we take a look at this, if let's just say Ethereum goes up in price to a price point of 5,000 bucks, we now have, let's just say, no days of fees quite yet, uh, but that's a thousand bucks in impermanent loss. The thing is, we now have $42,698. Our borrow 
borrow is still $40,000 plus a little bit of interest basically. But that interest is all covered by the fees that we're going to earn because we're earning higher on the actual liquidity pool. This is some form of arbitrage, you can call it in a sense. But also we get to keep that extra $2,698. That's profit for us right there. We just have to repay the 40. So not only do we get a little bit of the profit from the price appreciation, we also get the fees, which is the main goal. Now the risk here obviously is what happens if Ethereum goes to a price point of 4,000 bucks? Now we're out of range, we have some impermanent loss and we have to rebalance. Well, when we rebalance, we lock in that impermanent loss and then we'd end up going back to our initial entry price and we would no longer have $40,000. We'd have a little bit less. The goal is that the fees would help outweigh that. But the point is that's one of the risks here. So you need to have an idea of the market direction, right? And you also need to make sure that you're taking those fees and kind of repaying the borrow at some point in time. That way you can mitigate your overall risk. And of course, understand different contingency strategies and stuff like that will help you in the instance where you do have a lot of impermanent loss and it's on the downside. Now let's talk about some contingency rules. What if we're out of range, right? And this is likely just a short retracement before we go back up again. Well, we always want to make sure that we wait 48 to 72 hours. That way we can see if we go back in range to minimize our divergence loss, but also if we go back in range, we could start earning higher fees, which also offset that divergence loss. But in essence, let's just say the same thing happened, right? We went out of range to the downside. Ethereum went down 10 and percent. We're now sitting in all Ethereum, 8.99, let's just say. And again, this was with 40,000 bucks. We started with 7.14. So if we do the math, we started with 8.99 Ethereum. We now have 7.14 Ethereum. That means we accumulated an extra 1.85 Ethereum. We started with 8,000 USDC. We have zero USDC now, which means that we swapped 8,069 USDC for Ethereum, which means we paid an average price of 43.58, which is lower than the current price. This is the fact that we dollar cost averaged into Ethereum. So again, that kind of goes into that first strategy, but what you can do is take this a step further and you can now hold this, let's just say 8.99 Ethereum and zero USDC until we get back to the initial price of 44.68. And when we do that, we actually have $40,186, an extra $186. That's not from fees. This calculation right here does not include fees. That is just because we didn't sell on the way back up. We dollar cost averaged on the way down and then we held all the way on, on the way back up instead of dollar cost averaging back out of it on the way back up. So this is one of the many contingency strategies I've used. I actually had to position Ethereum to Tau. I did something like this. I made an extra 20% when I was at my break even price just by running this strategy. And then it continued to go up. Now, again, this is best going to work if you actually start with a lot of USDC. So if we were to put that, say, min price at 4,010, and then we were to put that max price at something like 4,600, well, that starts us with 80% USDC. So if we run that same exact math, uh, where we start with significantly less Ethereum and significantly more USDC, and then we end up with, let's just say, a total of 9.34 Ethereum, that's more Ethereum that we're accumulating, Right? And as you can see, we paid an average price of 42.50. And then we hold that back all the way up to our initial entry price. We have a profit of $1,748, not including fees at our initial entry price. Couple things regarding contingency as well is if the trend does continue away after you kind of rebalance and you don't want to implement a strategy like this, you can close and redeploy. This realizes impermanent loss and is a taxable transaction. Or you can add capital to widen the range or even shift the range, and then you don't have to swap anything. So that way you're not locking in any impermanent loss. And then of course, if you are doing a strategy that includes borrows, what you can do in the sense where the strategy is under stress, like loan to value is starting to get higher and higher and higher, health ratio is going lower, you can lower your borrow size by repaying some, whether it's from fees, whether it's removing some from the position, right? And you can also top up your collateral by taking other assets from your portfolio, potentially even borrowing against the LP. That's a lot of leverage there, so you have to be careful with it. But if you need to, you can. Or even just partially repaying, as I mentioned. So guys, this is just a list of a few of the impermanent loss strategies that you can use in your portfolio to kind of mitigate that and use that as your best friend as opposed to as a burden on your portfolio. Again, these were all generated in literally one prompt from our AI just by saying, how can we use impermanent loss to our advantage? So again, super excited to share that with our clients. If you're potentially interested in us helping you implement one of these strategies in your portfolio, then there's going to be a link at the top of the description for our website. You go check it out. If it aligns, go ahead and book a call with my team. We'll get you on board the same day. Anyways, hope you enjoyed. I'll talk to you guys soon and peace out.